By creating the notion of a war on terror in the aftermath of 9-11, the Bush administration was able to assuage and capitalize on heightened national fears in order to advance U.S. political and economic foreign interests in the Middle East. One blatant example of this fear-mongering in service of politics came with the passage of the Patriot Act on October 26, 2001, just 45 days after 9-11. Good morning and welcome to the White House. Today we take an essential step in defeating terrorism while protecting the constitutional rights of all Americans. With my signature, this law will give intelligence and law enforcement officials important new tools to fight a present danger. The rhetoric here is subtle but notable. The term present danger is a direct reference to the Supreme Court's doctrine of clear and present danger that determines when limits on free speech can be imposed. The use of the term is not accidental. It is an appeal to the American public that the war on terror is a sufficient enough threat that it requires the constriction of constitutional rights. Surveillance of communications is another essential tool to pursue and stop terrorists. Existing law was written in the era of rotary telephones. This new law that I sign today will allow surveillance of all communications used by terrorists, including emails, the internet, and cell phones. As of today, we'll be able to better meet the technological challenges posed by this proliferation of communications technology. While Bush is careful to emphasize that the new surveillance and espionage laws will only apply to terrorist threats, he fails to explain what can be considered a terrorist threat and what the extent of the new surveillance measures meant for U.S. citizens' civil liberties. In particular, the Patriot Act allows U.S. security agencies to apply for subpoenas from a special court called the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, or FISA Court. The subpoenas let these agencies intercept, track, and trace internet traffic and business records and attain this information from private organizations like Google and AT&T. But between 1979 and 2015, the FISA court has approved 38,365 warrants and rejected 12. So why is there not a serious public debate about the seemingly unchecked power of the United States surveillance system? The answer comes in large part thanks to the way surveillance is represented in the media. As we've seen from Bush's speeches, after 9-11 and prior to Edward Snowden's leak of NSA documents detailing the extent of the NSA's domestic espionage, mass surveillance was represented as a necessary force to combat terror. But after the leak, the representations changed. Now mass surveillance and amendments to the Patriot Act are represented as unsolvable issues, fixed realities. While it is true that the language of the law is difficult to decipher, Framing surveillance as an incomprehensible mess of legislation prevents changes to the system, even when there's bipartisan support. By representing mass surveillance this way, the population becomes intimidated by it and indifferent to it, leaving people to forego dialogue about it altogether. Look what happens now when the topic is addressed. A year ago, a former congresswoman was discussing the 215 program on the news. Watch what happened. This vast collection of data is uh, not that useful and uh, infringes uh, substantially on personal privacy. I think at this point we should uh, seriously consider uh, not, uh, uh, not continuing Section Harman, 215 let me, let me and getting interrupt the you. Congresswoman, let me interrupt you just for a moment. We've got some breaking news out of Miami. Stand by, if you will. Right now in Miami, Justin Bieber has been arrested on a number of charges. The judge is reading the charges, including resisting arrest and driving under the influence. He's appearing now before the judge for his bond hearing. Let's watch. To begin the process of changing a problem, we have to first change how the problem is represented.